This is the final segment of our special Air Force Week segments of Inside Space Flight. And in this segment, we continue our flyover aerial tour of Kennedy Space Center and Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. On October 29th to 31st, there will be an air show with the Air Force Thunderbirds and all manner of aircraft and F-22 and helicopters aerial demonstrations in Cocoa Beach as part of the celebration of Air Force Week 2010. If you're in the area for the space shuttle launch, take in the air show the couple days before. And with that, we continue our aerial tour. And once again, we're flying back out over the west. There's the Ares and Shuttle launch pads, Launch Complex 39B on the left, 39A on the right. Discovery is on the launch pad that is on the right. And we're flying west and a, and a little bit south right now. See the swampland and scrub of the Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge below. Even though the, the, the processing and launch facilities take up thousands upon thousands of acres, most of Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral is still pristine wilderness, the way it was hundreds of years ago. And it's an ideal place for the great variety of species and and plants to to thrive there's the vehicle assembly building in the background with the new mobile launcher tower as you can see Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge boasts one of the highest densities of endangered species of of any location in North America In addition to the space stuff and the Kennedy Space Center tours, if you're visiting, you definitely want to go to the Canaveral National Seashore and just take in some of the beautiful nature. It's a wonderful cohabitation between nature and technology, and both of them work together. The Space Center and Air Force Station need the surrounding area to be free of any... any uh, cities and stuff and the wildlife needs to be free from cities as well now what we're flying over now is the space shuttle landing facility the three mile long runway we start off from the northern end runway one five just to say it points 150 degrees toward the southeast 150 degrees the way a, a compass goes this is this runway is three miles long and 300 feet wide. I tried getting the entire runway in the frame of view of the camera and it just really, really is too wide. You can see the marks on the runway look like circles. That's where aircraft and space shuttles would be turned around after they, after they land on the runway. The dotted line is the center line of the runway. You can see scuff marks and, and such from many, many, many space shuttle landings in the past. This may be the site where Virgin Galactic and other space tourism companies eventually will fly from. It's a very long runway. We're also flying pretty slow. You can see that there's swamp and, and wilderness all around the runway, so it's very important for a space shuttle to land on the runway. It's not like out at Edwards Air Force Base, the backup landing site, where if they can't make it to the runway, there's a lot of flat desert that they theoretically could land a, a shuttle and survive. Here, if you miss the runway, you're going head first into swampland and alligators. Coming up on the end of the runway, as you can tell by the various markings. This is a 15,000 foot trip we're taking. 
and we end up coming up right about now this is runway 33 it points in the opposite direction 330 degrees pointing toward the northwest and here's the emergency extension of the runway just in case and that's it for the runway Now if we look back on the other side of the window again, we see more swampland. And there's the VAB again. I love the sight of that mobile launcher sticking up there. It reminds me of the Saturn V mobile launcher. They used to have three of those big tall launch towers sitting out by the VAB. And of course, we're flying over yet more water. In the distance there, that is Launch Complex 39. And we continue our flight back toward the Launch Complex 39 area. There's the new mobile launcher, which I think is pretty beautiful. You see another Space Shuttle mobile launch platform to the left. And the three orbiter processing facilities right there in the foreground. And the 525 foot tall vehicle assembly building. And the launch control center next to it. It's a very different perspective than being on the ground. And one of my favorite spots, the press site. And you can see, very brief, briefly, you saw the Pegasus barge that brings in the external tanks from Michoud assembly facility. There's Discovery again. We're now flying toward the south. And I, I'm trying to get into a good position. I don't know where the pilot's going at this point, so I don't know what I'm supposed to be looking for. That's the SpaceX launch complex. That white building on the right is where the Falcon 9 is processed. You can see the strong back arm is in the raised position. There's the, the uh, Delta IV launch complex, I believe. The tour was definitely, definitely too short. I could have, I would have been happy to hover around up there for three hours. And here we go, that is Phillips Parkway beneath. That is the road that goes from the NASA Causeway all the way up to uh, the Launch Complex 39 area. Traveled that road many times. It's actually a pretty horrible road. It's made of seashells and coquina and stuff, I guess, because it'll tear the treads off your tires in no time. And the helicopter, and I believe that is the Channel 13 cameraman looking back at me. I gave a wave, but I didn't get on TV. And here we're giving a, this is where the pilot was going, we're giving a treat to the uh, tourists and everybody at the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex below. See the shuttle launch experience, external tank there, the rocket garden. Doing a little flyover. People always love seeing the helicopters fly overhead. For a Monday morning, it was pretty busy. And the VAB in the distance again. 
At this point, we're headed back toward Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. There's Phillips Parkway again. We're going to be flying over the Kennedy Space Center headquarters area. That's where the headquarters is, the operations and checkout building, the space station processing facility. You can see that right below. And there is the There's the headquarters building right there, that long, low building. This taller, windowless building is the payload handling and rotation facility. That's where the payloads get wheeled out from the processing facility and in, their, in, a, in a giant canister, look like a cigar tube, and crane in there turns that tube from the horizontal to the vertical and then it gets wheeled out to the launch pad. And now we're just on a relaxing lazy morning flight back to Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. There's the Atlas V Space Launch Complex 41, the Atlas V Launch Complex again. The Solid Motor Assembly Building, or the Solid Motor Assembly Refurbishment Building, right there, those two buildings. The SpaceX Launch Complex in the background. Those two buildings were used by the Titan III and Titan IV rockets. Uh, they're no longer used, those rockets and I do believe SpaceX is using one of those buildings for something. I'm gonna guess they'll probably use it for the Falcon 9 Heavy or some future launch vehicle. You see NASA Causeway there below that road. That road leads directly to the north gate of Cape Canaveral Air Force Station or is it the the west gate, the north, northwest gate now here's the delta pad and you can see that those three orange orange things in, in the tower, that is a Delta IV heavy rocket next month it's going to launch a top secret payload for the National Reconnaissance Office most likely a communications satellite. And here we are flying over the hangars at administrative buildings of the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station industrial area. You see the blockhouses there in the distance by the beach of the old unused and abandoned launch complexes of ICBM row as they used to call it. There used to be giant gantries and towers sticking up all along there. I wish there still were. It would have been a great sight to be sure. And now we are just about to return back to the airfield, the skid strip. The skid strip was named uh, because it was built in the 1950s for the winged missiles, the Snark, uh, Mace, Matador, mainly the Snark. They would be launched with solid rocket motors and then they would fly on jet engines out over the ocean. And the skid strip was uh, designed for them to fly back on after their test flights and they would land on the skid strip on skids, not wheels. Now the skid strip is used mainly for bringing in uh, satellites and, and rockets that launch out of the Cape. So here we are back at the skid strip. My helicopter just landed and I was on Jolly 1 and that is Jolly 2 that just landed now. And the sign appropriately says welcome to 
Air Force week. <laughs>